When I talk to people about the Industrial Internet of Things or Industry 4.0, I often hear, hey, that's a great idea, but the IT department just isn't going to let us connect. And I tell people the IIoT in some ways is like fire. It's dangerous if it's used carelessly, but it's also incredibly valuable if used properly. In this webinar, I'm going to talk about why internet connectivity and Industry 4.0 can actually outweigh the cybersecurity risks. We'll talk about the myth of zero connectivity, the trust no one approach, why that's not a realistic expectation, and why there are reasons to use internet connectivity. We'll talk about specific architectures that will minimize the cybersecurity risks while not asking the IT department to do a bunch of extra work. Finally, we'll talk about recommendations on how to get started and next steps. A couple quick definitions before we really get into this. The Industrial Internet of Things, or the IIoT, refers to the connection of industrial devices and industrial equipment to the Internet. Smart manufacturing is a somewhat related term. Smart manufacturing is making the processes on the factory floor smarter through data analytics, machine learning, etc. Industry 4.0 really combines those two topics. Industry 4.0 includes internet connectivity as well as smart manufacturing processes. Most companies today recognize that they need some sort of smart manufacturing. It's the internet connectivity portion that gets questioned. So this slide is really a continuous improvement staircase. I will cover this slide in more detail in the next webinar, but the point I want to make here is that every step of this staircase, starting at reactive maintenance all the way up to machine learning and artificial intelligence, every step of the way is enhanced by internet connectivity. It's easier, faster, more cost effective to do all of these things if you can leverage outside resources. So what's going to happen if your competitors are leveraging Industry 4.0 to increase productivity by 10, 20, 30 percent while you're sticking with a zero connectivity IT policy? Ultimately, cybersecurity isn't going to matter if you can't compete in your industry. Now, I'm not saying that cybersecurity is unimportant, uh, just the opposite. It is extremely important but so is maintaining a competitive edge. And you really have to balance those two goals. The other problem with zero connectivity is that it really doesn't exist anymore. Industrial devices more and more are designed for connectivity and sooner or later somebody's going to connect them, either intentionally, accidentally, or maliciously. You hear stories on the news about homes getting hacked through toys. There's a rather infamous story about a Las Vegas casino getting hacked by a Wi-Fi connected fish tank. Stuxnet is by far the most famous hack in the industrial world, and that actually happened without any internet connectivity to the actual production site. Teresa Payton is a former White House cybersecurity chief, and she moved into the industrial world and is a fairly well-known cybersecurity expert today. One of the things she says is that most threats are not accidental, they're not malicious, but are simply the result of your best employees trying to do their jobs. If a critical production line goes down, your engineering department might realize that the equipment manufacturer might have insight into the problem. Or maybe the software provider that built the SCADA system might be able to troubleshoot it better than he or she can. And so what you have happen in many cases is someone will make a temporary connection out to the internet because they're trying to get the line back up and running. Those types of connections are not thought out ahead of time. They're basically IT workarounds. You're much better off recognizing that there's benefit to that type of connectivity and giving your employees a secure and effective way to manage that connectivity rather than trying to build their own workaround. So rather than trying to stick with the trust no one approach, sometimes called TNO, there is a simple, secure, and cost-effective approach called trust one. In this scenario, an edge node initiates an outbound connection 
using an open port if available or going through a proxy server to get to the internet. And the edge node will then connect to a known server using signed security certificates and data encryption, but it's an outbound connection. So there's no inbound firewall hole required. There's no outbound firewall hole required. What this is, is a secure way to get data from within your facility out to a cloud server. The external users can only access the data permitted by the edge node itself. There's no browsing of the network and there's little or no setup required by the IT department other than to grant a proxy server address if they're using a proxy server. Now the external users, some can be read-only. You can give them access to very specific information. In some cases, this connection can be read-write. So if you want to give someone access to go online and troubleshoot a PLC, that's possible. But that connectivity uh, is fully audited. All the users can be fully audited, so you know who has access to what, who has made what changes, who has viewed which information, etc. Now, there are some industries and applications where the server absolutely has to reside within the facility. You can take basically the same approach. In fact, the only difference you see between this screen and the previous one is that the server physically moves from out of the building into the on-site building. This basic architecture is actually compatible with something called the Purdue model that many companies have standardized on for internet connectivity. This doesn't show all of the hierarchy used in the Purdue model, but the basic functionality shown here can be implemented within a Purdue model. Another approach to add an additional layer of security is to use something called a data diode. And that name is fairly descriptive. Just like a diode allows current to only flow in one direction, a data diode allows data to flow in only one direction. So in this case, the data is going out from the plant to a server, but there is no inbound connection. It's a physical limitation. The signal's converted into a fiber optic, but the transmit-receive pair on a usual fiber optic connection is uh, broken down so that only the outbound data is allowed. Now some data diodes will also have the ability to temporarily switch on bidirectional communication, again at the discretion of the user, so that if they want someone to remotely troubleshoot, they can allow a full connection uh, on a temporary basis. So the point here is that there are a number of different options for cybersecurity that will allow you to take advantage of internet connectivity to implement Industry 4.0 programs. The final slide here is recommendations. So what you want to do is define your long-term vision for artificial intelligence, machine learning, connectivity to other software platforms. You want to evaluate the different hosting and security options that we've covered here and select one that's going to fit your industry, your application, your customers. So then you want to identify a specific project that will actually have short-term measurable return on investment, but that will also put you on a path to your longer-term goals. At that point, you should get some cost estimates, and that could be internal resources, external resources, you know, do some comparison but understand what the upfront costs as well as ongoing maintenance costs are. At that point, implement the project and then start measuring the return on investment. And you should be able to use that return on investment to then justify the next phase. Then you go back up to step three, identify the next project with ROI once again, and that will keep your continuous improvement projects going forward. If you have questions, want more information, or just want to chat about these topics a bit more, please reach out. My name's Tom Craven. You can contact me at the information on the screen. Thanks a lot.